is the Minnesota State Academy for Park Maintenance, Preservation, and Beautification. The finest institution of its kind, the Academy is where we train the best and the brightest in the field. At the Academy, our students are trained in absolutely every aspect of parks maintenance and beautification. From lawnmower Try it repair, now. Try it now. to sprinkler theory, and even park-specific culinary arts. Now that's a good-looking wiener. Every year, thousands apply with the aim of being accepted into the program, with the hopes of graduating and joining the ranks of the Academy's celebrated alumni, such as Raymond Malawaki, the first person ever to introduce the concept of team-based lawn mowing, or the great Philip Edward Hammond, inventor of the ditch. True heroes indeed. But perhaps we're getting ahead of ourselves, aren't we? Before you, the viewer, can even start dreaming of reaching the heights of these great alumni, I think it's best we start with a refresher on the basics. Basics such as why. Why do we do those crazy parks maintenance things we do? Well, you see, all training that takes place at the Academy is done in an effort to comply with the Clean Water Act. Established in 1972, this federal law protects lakes, rivers, and streams across the United States from water pollution. Now, one of the largest sources of water pollution is something that's called non-point source pollution, which is just a fancy name for stormwater pollution. This happens when rain washes materials such as dirt, leaves, and chemicals off of lawns and streets and into our local lakes and rivers. Larger cities and urban areas, as well as some smaller cities, institutions, and watershed districts are designated as MS4s, meaning they manage a municipal separate storm sewer system. This requires them to have a permit to discharge stormwater to local lakes and rivers. By law, MS4s are required to take steps to prevent stormwater pollution and to educate the public and their employees about how they can prevent stormwater pollution. And preventing that pollution is exactly where you come in. This film is designed to give you the basic park maintenance information you need in order to minimize pollution in our everyday tasks. So let's start with the first chapter, shall we? Chapter 1, Landscaping Practices. Landscaping practice number one. Keep grass clippings out of the street. Whenever possible, always allow grass clippings to remain on the lawn, keeping them out of our street and out of our ditches. Clippings left in streets and ditches can easily be carried into nearby lakes and streams. Our streets, roads, and parking lots are all connected to our lakes and rivers through our storm sewer systems. Unlike sanitary sewers, which include a trip through the water treatment plant, storm sewers deliver runoff water basically untreated into our water bodies. If leaves, grass, and other debris are left in the street, they can be washed into nearby lakes and rivers through our ditches and storm drains. But why is this such a bad thing? Well, grass and leaves contain phosphorus, a nutrient that helps algae to grow. And even the smallest of phosphorus increases can lead to significant algae growth. Therefore, the more grass and leaves left in the street, the more icky, green, smelly water we will find in our lakes and rivers. Also, aside from the unsightly mess made by blowing clippings into the street, blowing them around willy-nilly creates a potential hazard and may cause harm to passers-by, such as bicyclists, the elderly, small precious children, and the elderly. <laughs> Adorable. Whenever possible, use mulching mowers and mulching attachments to reduce the size of grass clippings. The smaller the clippings, the faster they decompose, eventually providing nutrients for the grass. In fact, yearly nitrogen applications may be reduced by up to one half when clippings are left on the lawn. So keep them there. Let's move on. Landscaping practice number two. Keep leaves out of the street. For the very same reason as their grass clipping cousins, leaves also need to be kept out of the street. They should be collected and taken to the city or county compost facility. Landscaping practice number three. Trim grass no shorter than 2.5 inches. 
Tall grass is healthy grass. When cutting the lawn, keep your mower settings in between 2.5 and 3.5 inches, no lower. There are many benefits to having a slightly taller lawn. Taller grass screens out light to the soil surface, preventing weeds from germinating. Also, a taller lawn encourages deeper root systems, increasing your grass's stress tolerance. And lastly, the taller your grass, the better your turf will allow for stormwater infiltration. Let's keep it going. Landscaping practice number four. Water plants, not the street. When you water, be sure to make it count. Position your sprinklers so that the majority of water ends up on the plants and not the adjacent sidewalk or street. Not only does a misplaced sprinkler waste resources, but the more water you send into streets and ditches, the more pollution you could be washing into our local lakes and rivers. Currently, 40% of lakes and rivers in Minnesota are impaired and in trouble. Out of these lakes, 25% are hurting due to excess nutrients. Another 40% are listed due to turbidity, PCBs and other chemicals, and fecal coli form. Yummy! With all this bad stuff in the lakes, this may be why you're noticing that fishing is nowhere near as good today as it was when you were a kid. Minnesota may be the land of 10,000 lakes, but when you think about it, you'd probably only want to swim in about 6,000 of them. So always be careful where you aim that thing, buddy! And of course, always be careful not to overwater. Too much of a good thing can waste water and even hurt the plants. Landscaping practice number five. Fertilize with care. Because of the big problems caused by phosphorus, state law requires that we always use a phosphorus-free fertilizer. Unless you are seeding a new lawn, or if soil testing reveals a phosphorus deficiency. Now, if you ever happen to overspread or spill your fertilizer, always clean it up. Either place a spillage back in the bag or back on the lawn. Never, ever blow or wash the fertilizer into the street. This brings us to chapter two. Erosion control. At the Academy, we ensure that our students understand that erosion is a major source of water pollution and not to be taken lightly. Even the smallest of parks and right-of-way projects can erode and create sediment-laden runoff. Sediment is a horrible thing. It reduces water clarity. It carries phosphorus to local water bodies. And it can kill aquatic plants and animals. This is exactly why you must follow basic erosion and sediment control practices. Practices such as cover your soil. Never leave your soil exposed in between work. Whenever possible, cover your bare areas with erosion control blanket or hydro mulch. Once work is complete, it is important to establish vegetation as soon as possible by applying seed or sod. Because when it comes to erosion prevention, vegetation is our best friend. Erosion control practice number two, perimeter control. When working with exposed soil, it is vitally important to keep runoff on the site and out of our streets and waterways. Use silt fencing or sediment control logs to keep soil and runoff right where it belongs, on the site. Erosion control practice number three, storm drain protection. A storm drain might as well be an express lane to our lakes and streams. Because of this unfortunate condition, it is important to protect them from any possible runoff during work. Be sure to install some form of temporary inlet protection whenever working around storm drains. Now that's a good job. This express lane is closed. Now let's take a look at erosion control practice number four. Stockpile protection. Poor stockpile protection can be a huge source of sediment-laden runoff. That's why it's important to always be smart when it comes to your stockpiles. The first thing to think about when talking about stockpiles is placement. Where should they be located? 
always place stockpiles of soil, gravel, and other materials as far away as possible from nearby drainage areas. Next up, perimeter barriers. You can stop sediment using a perimeter barrier on your stockpiles. These can take the form of berms, dikes, fiber rolls, silt fence, or gravel bags. During winter and rainy days, always cover up your stockpiles. And if you have bag material, always keep it on a pallet and under cover. Well, friend, this brings us to the end. You're now ready to head out into the brilliant world of parks maintenance. And when you're out there, be sure to remember and rely on your trainer. By following the simple practices outlined in this film, there is no way you can go wrong. So go out there and do the Academy proud.